today, let's do a little walk around on this bike here. So, looks fairly complicated, huh? It is. So, uh, I started with a Schwinn Stingray and uh, built it up from there. I cut the head tube off of it and uh, let's see, I didn't use the seat post. I cut it all to bits. I, I reused, I know I reused the head tube from it. Uh, this was actually the seat post from it and this was the bottom bracket from it. I welded it back here, used a mountain bike uh, suspension for a pivot point and uh, I welded this up using the original cranks same on the other side you can see the original crank I cut off and welded a gear to it so that's my jack shaft um, and then I put the mountain bike suspension that way it's not a rigid ride and as you can see this tensioner moved when I did that and uh, that's because I put a tensioner on there so as this swings the chain shortens this can adjust appropriately for it um, and then right here we have a regular mountain bike seven speed hub it was a cheap steel one i welded the caps to the center since there's no spokes holding everything in line anymore and uh, welded an extra gear onto this cap for it so that way it can transfer the power to the jack shaft and then up front we've got our normal uh mountain bike three speed front end uh put shimano derailers on it and uh, front and rear so the rear one sorry is over here that's why i did jack shaft two to keep it up high because this bike is obviously fairly low with the original schwinn 20 inch rear wheel uh, and as you can see i painted it but then i also went ahead and masked off and painted on some uh schwinn markings that were on the original wheels as well and redid the hub too after i painted it so it kind of looks somewhat original and then i refitted this wheel here to i re-centered it sorry and then i welded a little ring i made for it to accommodate a disc brake so now i could put a rear disc on it as well and then one more modification i did there was to pull out the old free wheel and put a much larger one to uh gear it down a bit because uh it was pretty tough with the original gear on there i didn't gear it down enough in the center so i did that give me more usable gears because altogether this bike is all steel none of it is fiberglass fenders sidecar everything is steel so it weighs 150 pounds so i really wanted to try and keep the weight down now to see here i went really rugged and heavy with my frame too uh really no other reason than i wanted big stuff i wanted a big fat tube on it and uh i could only find them for reasonably priced and i think it was eighth inch wall thickness so uh yeah this is a big beefy pipe for the main tube and then for the top i just used like some uh they were the corner pieces for some shelving units they're steel i cut them apart welded them together into an i-beam and that was my main frame and then i found on a facebook marketplace this tank it was actually for free um it was from like an old i think uh kawasaki little ac 80 cc or something and it doesn't hold gas now i just put some spray foam insulation in it to keep it so it doesn't ding 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 every time you hit a bump and then in place of the gas cap i epoxied on one of my squadron coins from my current squadron a challenge coin mine on air force base fifth mxs that's right we fixed the buff to blow shit up Woo! all right uh <clears throat> i liked the springer look and i wanted a nice soft seat so i went with this springer schwinn i wanted to keep everything that had names on it schwinn you know except for the stuff i did because it's a schwinn so i wanted to kind of stay true to that even though it's not like a real Schwinn you know what I mean it was a Schwinn Stingray but not even like the real originals but whatever um, and then I liked the bigger front tire look that the Stingrays have but I went way bigger on it so if you can't tell 
it's got a three inch wide wheel on there with a three inch tire and i went with knobbies since i was going with the for the military look on this bike i went with knobbies keep it off-road looking but i still did put the nice wraparound fender that's actually a steel fender for a 21 inch front wheel on a harley i bought it off amazon and i made my own mounts and stuff for it it had a little thing here to mount it i trimmed all that off so it was just slick um, the rear fender this was the original schwinn fender um, i cut it and then i took another one and i cut it too and then i welded them together welded up some holes uh, and then used some steel rod to weld up some supports for it to bolt it in um, one thing you'll notice about this i still kept this original forward mount one thing you'll notice about this bike is the welds don't look so pretty i was getting better with it but this is still when i used a flux core welder before i could tig so if you ask me for flux core most of them look pretty freaking slick um for flux core <laughs> some of them on the real thin stuff i could just pop 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 i couldn't really do much so they don't look as pretty but this little porous and a little bird shit look in there but they're pretty strong they don't really need to be this is for looks anyway this tank so on the front end what i did to fit this wider tire i actually uh cut these off and relocated them because i was an idiot and i bought a rear front end wheel and tire uh so it's got the threads here for the free wheel and stuff, which might be cool. I might have to thread a free wheel, free wheel on there and put like electric motor up here and one back there. Maybe, I don't know, make it all wheel drive or something. That'd be pretty neat. Run a chain. That'd be, that'd be pretty sick actually. Now I think about it. I might have to try and do that in the future. <laughs> but anyway, so I was an idiot about it. So I got it. It's for like a 10 speed, I think. So it's an offset uh, wheel. So I had to center it up by moving these over as best i could and that got it for the most part pretty center it's still a little bit that way because i had to clear the disc brake but it works um and then i use the original forks the original fork here the fork tubes uh, for the triple tree i beefed them up and welded them together you can maybe make out the cut lines i welded an extra that much there there and this in here um, did the same thing for the top and that way I could widen it up. You can see my plate here that beefs it up the joint um, That's how much I welded in there uh, <clears throat> So that widened it up so I could fit this tire. Look at that. That is way wider than the original These holes Were the original holes for these I used the rear original holes back there on the rear plate and drilled new forward ones But that gives you an idea of how much I had to move these to widen them out uh, for the headlight it's a uh, cheap motorcycle headlight and if this little brim looks familiar uh, it might it's actually the end of one of these fenders when I cut them off I saved them I reused one and this headlight here had like the steel bars over it because I thought it looked cool but then in reality it sucked so then I cut those off and left a little ring around the top and welded this onto the little lips in there. You can maybe make them out. Um, and the reason I put this on there is kind of because it looks cool, but also because this headlight, I swapped it out and put a bicycle LED, a high powered one in there. Um, and it was really blinding in all directions. So I put that on there to kind of cut it off and uh, kind of kick it a little off. So that way oncoming traffic wasn't blinded by it if I went out in the dark. So still got the original bike button in the back here. So it still has all the functions, but I cut it off, cut it down and made it fit in there. I don't know if you can see the button lighting up there. Um, and I put it so it springs in there like the original bulb would have. I used the original bulb piece, cut it apart, modified it to fit that on there. So it kind of the headlight's still completely returnable to original. Um, but otherwise, there it is. Uh, what else did I do? <clears throat> you can tell I uh, did not use the original handlebars here. 
I went with uh, for I don't know what they are maybe 18 inch or 16 inch ape hangers they might be 16 inch just to kind of give it some attitude lean them forward a little bit right where they're comfy right there for that seating position uh, and that's pretty sweet <sighs> let's see what else so I got the Shimano shifter brake combos for the front and rear up here on as well and got some nice SRAM grips I replaced the original ones because they were they were a bit chewed up so I didn't use them uh, now for the sidecar this looks crazy huh so it's completely removable from the bike so might sound weird impossible but it is so with all that suspension I couldn't mount anything in the back I had all this going on so I had to be careful I had a really small window of area to actually mount it and be able to pedal and have a functioning rear end so what I did is I welded up three seat tubes triangulated to receivers uh, that I welded into the frame here so pop all three of these clamps and it's tight fit because you know seats are always kind of tight and then you can wiggle it out of there every once in a while I'll throw some grease on the tubes so they'll slide in and out a little better um, and that's that and then the sidecar body is removable from the sidecar frame they're not integrated they're two separate pieces so that way I figure if I ever want to change it or maybe go with a lightweight one because this again all steel um, so if I wanted to go with a lighter weight one, I could swap it. So I built the frame using old mountain bike parts, uh, pieces of frame that I cut off of mountain bikes, and then four bolts, one here, one in each corner to weld it onto there. So then to kind of make it rigid when you had the weight of a, uh, something in here, like a, something alive, right? Like a child or dogs or something, I went ahead and also put this on the side and this was the the clamp part for a seat and the reason i welded that on there like that you can see i welded the pins in there too uh, is so that way i can unbolt this take that piece out take those four bolts off and the sidecar comes off of there but then the tube frame that the sidecar is built on is also there to help stiffen up the chassis so now let's go on to that part right so this so the tube frame for this if you look the sides are nice and rounded right so what I did is I originally built it with four tube corners to go up from right where they bolt there's nuts welded in the end of those that piece of tube so that tube is bolted straight down there and then I squared it off this is that tube welded a top a handle on it a no shit handle for a passenger um, tied it together over here and over there and then once I had that that was pretty much the opening and the frame for it so then I used an old uh, uh, water heater skin the outer skin it was stripped off and tack welded it all together cut it formed it and uh, just tack welded it again it was all with my flux core so you can see the little tabs in there I kind of drilled them out and did almost like spot welds and then uh, let's see some of that you can see looks like caulk in the front it was because I burned through and I kept burning through and filling it so then uh, I just put some caulk to fill in the seams on the sides I did the same around all the corners since I had those little notches cut I filled them and smoothed it out with caulk just so it looks good and then painted over it um, the side skins are welded all the way around to the tube so it strengthens it up quite a bit and you can tell it's not perfectly smooth it's been beaten to heck and back getting it off a water heater straighten out enough to get onto here and I built a trunk into it as well so all this space back here might as well right so I made obviously the handle from a bolt and some washers and uh, you can see there's the bolt and washers Put some pins so that way when you turn it these rods will go out and slide under the strip rail to lock it in place so again the strip rail this is uh i made that so that way if it rains whatever's in here doesn't get ruined so if you're out on a bike you know you might have a phone or keys or who knows what 
you can put that in here if it's safe if you get stuck out somewhere and it's all sealed up with caulk as well where to fill in all the any gaps in the flux core weld so these little stiffeners this trunk lid these drip rails i formed all of these from the water tank steels so they're all steel then i sprayed some alumilite uh, umr universal mold release onto the drip rail all around it and then put caulk on here and closed it so that gives me a nice tight seal it's watertight i sprayed it with a hose water does not go in there works pretty freaking good so uh the one thing is you look my lid has my handle has no limits so if you turn it too far these will fall out and you gotta line them back up so you gotta go from here to here and that's about it if you go too far they'll pop out but it's secured now so there we go I even made these hinges from the same steel and tacked them on there and put a little steel pin inside there. Used old little drill bits for the hinge pins. Uh, this side fender was from a bicycle. Obviously, I just fit it on here, trimmed it down a little bit, added some more mount holes so it mounts a lot. Really no reason other than it looks cool and I wanted it to kind of match that one so i pulled it up till it matched so the flare they both kind of go together uh, this was from a small child's bike a 20 inch uh, mountain bike surprisingly enough yes it had suspension that's crazy huh so i put it in here and i used it that's actually the front of the frame and then i cut it and added the suspension back in a different position uh, today i moved that suspension up forward a little bit stiffen it up because down there it was like floppy if you lean one way it would just stay at least now it'll go back up i haven't tried it with weight yet uh, but we'll see today because that's another thing i also welded in my doggy d-ring this was the whole purpose i built the sidecar so i could put my pets in here my little dogs i got two little tiny ones and they can ride so i finally decided to go ahead and put a d-ring got a carabiner on there so i can snap them in and go for a test ride and see if they like it <clears throat> I've had some kids in here before, my buddies cut kids, about 40, 50 pounds each, one at a time, and it was sagging down pretty low, but it worked all right. It gets harder to pedal, obviously. Um, and now this really fat wheel, this uh, is two steel 20 inch wheels. I cut a lip off and welded them together. The inside I sanded it smooth, put a bunch of duct tape around it as a big wide, uh, it was like, a, what do they call it? the tire the tube tape or whatever to wrap around there pretty much to protect the tires and then i spoked these i lined up the holes when i welded them so that way I spokes the same they're just more offset now um and i used the same tire that was actually on the mountain bike it was still good uh it might even be the same tube i can't remember i don't remember if i bought a new one or not but yeah it was old we got it for free all the scrap bikes i used in the building of this I'd got them for free. Uh, either people gathered them up, didn't want them anymore, or I found them on the curb, going out to the, going out for the trash man to pick up. So it was actually fairly low cost build. I did buy a lot of things, right? The headlight, the crank, the pedals, the fucking shifters, seats, uh, stuff like that, tires, wheels and tires. Uh, so I think I have about 800 bucks in it total, and a whole lot of time these seats in here i made them myself too i even stitched them up did my own upholstery on there i used marine grade uh oh what do you call it? pleather not real pleather uh not real leather pleather stitched it up with white thread so it matches the schwinn seat uh put some nice lush looking uh diamonds in there right because that looks luxurious and then it's on top of some packaging foam that came in a crate with some something like it but just no real foam then it's backed with pink foam and then uh that's it they just sat in here this one i put some screws there's a little piece of wood in the back it screws it back so it doesn't just pull right off uh, but that way it'll make it pretty comfy now i don't i wouldn't put an adult in here i don't think unless there was a little adult it'd be hard to pedal anyway but my dogs are tiny. One's like uh, 
think I think together they'll be about 50 pounds. They won't be bad. Won't be too bad. We'll see. No bigger than the children we had in there before. For lights, this one, I wasn't too, this is one of my first ones. So I didn't really, uh, I wasn't into all the electronics and stuff like I really am now. How I know so much that I can do shit. Uh, so these ones I kept simple. This is just a little battery operated tail light from Amazon. It's rechargeable USB. So the battery's all included there. You just unthread it and then you can plug it into your USB and charge it up. I can't lefty. How sad is that? I can't even screw a light on lefty. And then you just hold the button and it lights up. And it has different settings as well. Hold it and it turns it off. So those are not shift on the go lights. Those are you do them when you want them. And then I put a cheap cycle computer on here too. Nothing crazy, but it's got the odometer on it. So it'll tell you how far you've ridden ever. And uh, you can reset it if you want. Uh, but it will hold it when the battery dies. And uh, it's also got the speedometer in there, which I measured the rollout of the wheel on the, from flat concrete. So I get that adjusted right. So it's got the little magnet here and the sensor zip tied up here, which is the cable run. Cause that was kind of an afterthought. Not gonna lie, it really was. Uh, and then obviously it can just roll when you got it here. So the other thing I added was the kickstand. This also works when it's just the bike. Oh, we're on too much of a slope for it to set now. But uh, it's the original twin kickstand with some modifications. Obviously a different spring because I wanted to have it higher up. On the Schwinn, the bracket mounts it so low that uh, it hangs way below the frame. And I just hate that look. So I drilled it into my big tube frame and got them all lined up nicely. So that's uh, pretty much it. it. Okay, that's pretty much it for this bike's walk around. Uh, maybe later we'll go on a short ride. We'll see. Um, painted the nice little shark face on there. Did the national star. So it kind of goes together um, with that military theme. You know what? Screw it. Let's go for a quick ride right now. Do, 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 do. All right. So when you go for a ride, just watch your heels don't hit this or this. So you want to ride on your heels because uh, to fit the sidecar where the sidecar is not on there, it ain't a problem. With the sidecar on there, it can get in your way. So, especially with the heels of your shoes. So, can't really haul ass on this, obviously. It's a, uh, it's heavy. 150 pound bike but it can move pretty good with the sidecar on there you want to lean into the turns a bit you can see right now we're going 7.37 miles an hour so we can go a little faster might have a little bit of a tailwind right now there we go eight i did take this on an eight mile bike ride before too so you can do it. It was slow going though on the way back. We went on dirt roads and with the hills and the rough gravel, you know, it doesn't roll out like you do on pavement. So it's about a two hour, eight mile ride, I think. folks when I was building this comment oh it's so heavy how do you even ride it and it's like that's why I got all these gears you can just pedal away go whatever speed is comfortable for you you know I was thinking of putting on an electric motor and I may one day I just haven't yet 
I don't know, now that I got the dogs in there, if they actually like it, I might put one on here then. So now check this out. With super low gearing that's possible. A lot of pedaling, not really moving. But you know what? Makes it so I can easily go up moderate hills with it. Uh, so it's, weight is not really much of an issue. And there you go. Kick standy. So now it's got six miles on it <laughs> since I put the cycle computer. I had quite a few more, but I haven't done many miles since I put that on, obviously. Um, I have a lot of miles too without the sidecar. Uh, this is actually, it's a fun bike. It's comfy too with the suspension. It's not quite like the bagger that doesn't have any suspension. They're both built off the same basic bike with the same basic design, just different finishing really. So yeah, that's that. That's my sidecar. Yeah, pretty sweet. See you next time, guys. Hope you like this.